Hello, everyone. I am Zhao Chuang. Today, let's get to know Cole the Dispoletosaurus. Dispoletosaurus is a genus of large carnivorous dinosaurs that lived in Canada during the late Cretaceous and appeared a bit earlier than the Tyrannosaurus. Among carnivorous dinosaurs, Dispoletosaurus was medium to large in size, about 9 meters in length. The largest specimen is 9 meters long, while the average is about 7 to 8 meters long. As a whole, Tispoletosaurus looked like a miniature of Tyrannosaurus, many structures of which were similar to the latter. For example, just like Tyrannosaurus, it had tiny forelimbs with only two claw digits, a sturdy head, a series of keratinous protrusions on the nose, and some bumps above the eyes. It walked on its to thick and strong hind limbs, which ended in for toed feet with huge claws on the toes. Three toes were used for walking, and another tiny one pointed backward. It also had a somewhat long tail. All these features resembled the Tyrannosaurus. But if you look carefully, you'll find some differences between these two. First of all, its head looked very similar to Tyrannosaurus, especially its square snout. But if observing from the front and you'll see that the rear of its head was not as wide as that of Tyrannosaurus, and its binocular vision was not as good as Tyrannosaurus either. From a top-down view, this is more prominent. The rear of its face was almost as wide as the front. Besides, its head was not that sturdy compared to Tyrannosaurus. When viewed from above, the overall head looked relatively thin, which resulted in fewer muscles on its neck. In proportions, it had a somewhat longer neck than Tyrannosaurus. In addition, it had some other characteristics. Like most Tyrannosaurids, it had a lacrimal horn at this position, and a bump behind the eyes. But currently, we think what distinguished it from other Tyrannosaurids, is that it had a small triangular bone like a pyramid between the two horns, which filled the depression between the two parts, resulting in a huge horn formed above the eyes. When it was alive, the horns were covered with keratinous structures, forming to big horns like cat ears above the eyes. The shape of this horn was also complicated. Viewed from above, it presents many curves, making it a complex structure. This is something we haven't seen on the skulls of other Tyrannosaurids so far. Other dinosaurs might have it, but it was probably lost during fossilization. Next, let's look at the face of Dispoletosaurus. Like many Tyrannosaurids, Dispoletosaurus had many textured decorations on its face, which made us think more when restoring its integument. Many large carnivorous dinosaurs had such textured decorations on their mouth. The most typical is Tyrannosaurus, followed by Carcharodontosaurids such as Giganotosaurus and Mapusaurus. Relatively, it was not very obvious for Allosaurus. But this feature was quite prominent on the face of the Dispoletosaurus. Through comparison, it's been found that textured decorations on this part of juvenile or adolescent Dispoletosaurus were deeper, which gradually became flat after reaching adulthood. Not many modern animals have similar skeletal textures. Generally speaking, crocodiles are likely to be mentioned and discussed. To better adapt to the aquatic life, or owing to the specialization of its snout, the crocodile's whole face is covered with small rough foramens, but at this position on the crocodile's face, there is a small group of large scales, similar to the structure of Tyrannosaurid's mouth. Observing a living crocodile, you'll see the skin texture of this part grows along the underneath bones. So we wonder if the mouth of Dispoletosaurus, while it was alive, was covered with scale-like skin structures, just like the face of a crocodile. We're not sure about that. Through tomographic scans, scientists found a large number of nerve structures inside the mouth. The mouth was filled with trigeminal nerves. In this regard, its function was similar to the structure of a crocodile's mouth. So when we restored this part, we referred to this point of view and made the mouth as rough as a crocodile's integument. Of course, further research is needed about this. What's also notable is that this part of the skin was somewhat like that of some turtles, such as leatherback sea turtles. The face of leatherback turtles is very smooth here, but there are lots of such textured structures on the bones, which are totally invisible while they are alive. It is a layer of hard skin, 
that extends to the edge of the mouth and becomes a keratinous beak. Currently, we're not sure which type of facial structure such large carnivorous dinosaurs resembled more, or if they had their own unique structure. Then, let's look at its lower jaw. Dyspaletosaurus lower jaw was thick at the rear. Observe the inside of the bones, and you'll find very strong muscles. The muscles run obliquely from the inside of the wide jaw to the sagittal crest, that is located between its to temporal fenestry, forming a very robust structure. Dyspaletosaurus didn't have a wide head like Tyrannosaurus, but it still had a scary mouth. Dyspaletosaurus shared a similar body plan to Tyrannosaurus, but because of its short pubis, the belly didn't look as huge, but relatively slender on the whole. Its forelimbs were specialized and small, just like Tyrannosaurus, but much larger than most Tyrannosaurids. It had longer forelimbs in proportion to body size than other Tyrannosaurids. Generally, it's believed that Dyspaletosaurus had larger forelimbs, while Tarbosaurus and Tyrannosaurus had smaller ones. Among them, Tarbosaurus had the smallest forelimbs. Also, it had thick feet like Tyrannosaurus. There were huge pads under its feet, which made the feet look much stronger than the skeleton, and allowed it to walk more stably. It also had a thick tail, just like many other dinosaurs. The tail was divided into upper and lower groups of muscles at this position. In the middle of the tail bones, there was a structure called the transverse process, which formed a baffle-like structure that divided the tail muscles into upper and lower groups. It was reported that a partial skin of Dyspaletosaurus has been found. The skin seemed to be covered with small hexagonal or polygonal non-overlapping scales that were arranged irregularly, only several millimeters each in width, so the whole body looked smooth, with some folds at the joints. But looking very closely, you'll see fine scales on the surface like coarse sandpaper. That's also something we tried to restore on the model. Good, the above concludes our introduction to Cold the Dyspaletosaurus.